So we're ending the uh, Independent Show 2016 edition. Ross, you moderated a panel the other day that spoke to several issues. Uh, first, we'll talk a little bit about the set-top issue because that was top of mind at this conference. What, yeah. what was kind of the takeaway from that from your perspective? Well, the set-top box issue is a big concern for smaller operators because of the burdens that it could impose on smaller entities, uh, particularly at a time when smaller entities are making a lot of innovative choices and options available to consumers are offering TiVo devices that allow for integrated search as well as uh, providing their linear service side by side with their over-the-top services like uh, Netflix and Hulu and other things like that. Smaller operators are also offering innovative services like Aris Moxie and also giving cons consumers choices not to use set-top boxes at all by offering services in something called ClearQualm, which doesn't require any encryption, so you buy a digital-ready television, you can make it. So well, there's a lot of innovation, there's a lot of choice that smaller operators are providing in the marketplace today. The FCC is now looking at this new proposal to require them to uh, adopt technical mandates which are going to be costly to them and for small operators with a thousand subscribers 5,000 subscribers and more within the definition of small these are really overwhelming costs we predicted that the cost would be at least 200 smaller entities would be forced out of the video business or to close shop altogether as a result of this and larger ones would be forced to raise prices so this is a big big concern this is a mandate that we've never quite seen in terms of cost of this size and so ACA is really committed it's our number one priority to ensure that the relief that's necessary which we believe are exemptions is adopted prior to this thing if it moves forward at all well and clearly uh, we saw this uh, recurring theme in the panels the idea of they're trying to help their consumers get these other sources of content right yeah, that's exactly correct. I mean, smaller operators are really committed to their broadband services, first and foremost. Video is still an important part of the bundle that they're offering, but broadband is first and foremost. Consumers want content in various ways, including over the top, and to the extent that smaller operators can keep their broadband customers happy by, you know, providing over the top alongside their linear content, they're doing it. So there's no sort of protectionist, there's no, there's no interest in preserving the set-top boxes. A lot of the assumptions going into this rulemaking I think are based on false premises and so we're trying to make uh, the policymakers aware of all of the innovations at smaller operators and how in a lot of ways they're a little bit different than the larger operators. Well, it's kind of ironic that uh, you've got these kind of new players coming in with a set-top proposal who aren't bound by the same proposed privacy rules. Oh, that's exactly correct. Well, the chairman's original proposal had a number of different uh, number of different flaws to it. Uh, number one, you know, cable operators are under statutory rules that protect their privacy, their customers' privacy. Yet, what the proposal was suggesting would be that cable operators would make their signals, their streams available to work on third-party devices that may be produced by uh, TiVo or might be produced by Google. Yet, these third-party manufacturers are not subject to protecting the privacy in terms of what their cus what 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 uh, users of their devices are actually watching and so uh, this proposal would sort of do an end around the privacy rules uh, there's no obligations on these manufacturers devices to support EAS is an, as another example there's no uh, copyright protection you know we have certain rights that we have to give to pro programmers in order to uh, in order to have the rights to deliver the programming. Well, while we're subject to it because we sign a contract, the third-party manufacturer doesn't need to follow those same rules. So there's a number of flaws that I think has forced the commission to sort of reevaluate its initial proposal. It's now considering an alternative proposal put together, put forward by larger MVPDs called the apps proposal. And the apps proposal would require MVPDs to make their service available on apps, which would be a way to protect all of those things like copyright protection, uh, EAS, and privacy, but make them work on third-party devices. So it's a preferred approach. It's kind of consistent with industry um, trends, but <clears throat> the cost is very significant in order to do so. And so smaller operators, it's not a 
better option for smaller operators. Uh, smaller operators need the flexibility to get to that place on their own. They will do so at some point in the future, but mandates to do so is problematic. The last kind of third rail is, is the retransmission, which uh, obviously these over-the-top providers don't have to worry about, but it's a huge cost, right? Yeah, retransmission consent is a marketplace that's broken. There's uh, ever-increasing blackouts in the marketplace due to uh, negotiating practices by broadcasters that, that, that lead to them. Prices are increasing. It's become a billion-dollar industry for the broadcasters. Projections by 2020 is it will be $10 billion or more. So the FCC, at the direction of Cong Congress, told the FCC to uh, do a rulemaking to try to make sure that its good faith rules are sort of working as intended. We were really... Um, disappointed, shocked by the recent FCC chairman who kind of announced that he wasn't going to do anything on the matter. We feel like that it's a real problem. We think that the flaws in his logic for not doing anything will be will reveal themselves in the coming year as, as many smaller operators are going to be negotiating deals at the end of 2017. And what I would expect is we'll see more blackouts, we'll see higher prices, we'll see consumer dissatisfaction. And, you know, it's a really lost opportunity that we weren't acting on it now and we will eventually have to act on it anyway. One of the things that I heard is kind of a theme is that operators need to make sure they're educating their customers about that. Yeah, we had a real spirited panel yesterday where smaller operators and smaller programmers were both discussing problems in the in the marketplace that both of them shared. Uh, the, the themes were higher prices for content, uh, bundling practices by large programmers and tiering and penetration requirements. And so these kind of combination of factors, what it's doing is it's obviously forcing uh, operators to offer services to their customers at prices that are sort of unacceptable and, 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 and they're unable to tailor packages that meet their customers' needs. For independent programmers, they're often being told that, that, that there's not channel capacity for them to be carried or the budget isn't there. And it's all it's all the source for, it's all because of the same source which is sort of an uneven uh, balance in leverage between large programmers and smaller ones and uh, practices that sort of uh, are, are, are unacceptable and not consumer friendly. So, you know, the both uh, hopefully with the panel both sides will come together and, 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 and we can find a way to sh show policymakers that change is really necessary. Excellent. Well, Ross, always great catching up hey, with you. Hey, thanks a lot. Good to see you.